The Nissan 300ZX was more hyped than Waterworld. Check out this car, this week's brand new review is a Z32, and it was from Nissan. The Z32 isn't a sports car, and don't try to pretend that it is. The worth of the Z32 is more inflated than an engagement ring. It's 1994 again, and Bret Hart is the WWF champion, his brother Owen is king of the ring, and it's all coming to a head in a steel cage at SummerSlam! The summer movie season has Forrest Gump, Speed, The Lion King, True Lies, The Mask, The Crow, Natural Born Killers, and America has a president who plays the sax and gets his Jimmy John by women who aren't his wife running for the office 22 years later. Once upon a time, there was a car called the Nissan Fair Lady Z. Maybe because the person naming it was a theater geek who could never get the girl on his end, so this was the only fair lady he could get. Eventually, the car would come to be known as the Nissan 300ZX, and it would occupy the third and fourth generation of the Nissan Z car line. In the mid-80s, you've got the V6 engines, a naturally aspirated VG30E and a turbocharged VG30ET, which could get you anywhere from between 160 to 200 horsepower. Turbocharged models made use of a three-way electronically adjustable shock absorbers, because why the hell not? Paying more for boost, you ought to pay more for other things too. Eventually, the Z31 model became the top seller of all Z cars ever made. So what did Nissan undo they got rid of it and they immediately replaced it with the z32 it was more expensive less familiar more complicated and offered no substantial upgrades beyond retaining the 3 liter displacement and a twin turbo rated at now 300 horsepower yeah i don't get it either but it's 1990 and everything has to change. Like we're not going to wait for the 90s to become its own decade. We're going to ride the vapor waves of the 80s and turn this franchise around. Because even though it did need adjustment, we're going to do it in the 80s. Because it's the 80s and most people still have questionable taste. For crying out loud, why kill a golden goose? Okay, maybe it wasn't a golden goose, but what's wrong with a bronze barn swallow? I got your barn swallow right here. Of course. This is kind of unfair. If they just kept riding the Z31 until it was no longer profitable, they have been called to the carpet for avoiding evolution like a southern middle school. But come on, this is Nissan. Any reasonable person should have known what they were getting. But what is the Z32 for? The inside, the, the cabin, is very S13-esque in the way it slopes away from you. And it's short, and it looks like it handles, and it doesn't. This is a soft car. And also, this great V6 engine that in, this is the naturally aspirated one, but this great V6 engine, oh, you think double cams, it's gonna sing, and it doesn't. This car, this engine has no top end power. It's all mid-range. You pull out and there's nothing. You get this surge of torque between 2,000 and 3,000, maybe 4,000 RPM, and the top end, it just drops back off again. This car is meant for people who want to cruise on the highway. People who just want to do third and fourth gear pulls all the time. But Nissan knew their audience, and they knew exactly who they were going for with this car. The Z32 is a car for the conscientious objector. Why? Because it's not a Corvette C4. That's who Nissan was going after. Compare the two cars. A naturally aspirated Z32 made 222 horsepower and 198 pound-feet of torque. Comparatively, a Corvette C4 base made approximately 375 horsepower and 370 pound-feet of torque. So, okay, get the Corvette. It's clearly faster. And then you look at weight. Z32 is approximately 3,300 pounds, and a Corvette C4 is 3,000 240 pounds. All right, so the C4 is lighter with a lot of horsepower and even more torque. Okay, it's now time for price. The Nissan 300ZX, naturally aspirated in 1993, was approximately $30,825. Now, adjusted for inflation, that makes this a $51,000 car, thereabouts in 2016. A Corvette C4, the MSRP, was approximately $33,000. $600. And in 2016 money, that's about a $56,000 car. So, naturally aspirated Z32, the only place it beats it in is price. Okay, 
It's a little bit cheaper, but not much. So who wants to pay to have your torque cut almost in half and not even have more horsepower? We haven't gotten to build quality. Oh yes, the interior. That is where the Z32 shines. It's so much better than a C4. GM was just, yeah, we're America. Parts been to the max. But Nissan knew the aesthetics of driving. They knew that if you're buying an upscale thing, you should feel exclusive. And that's why everything inside this car feels like it's for you. It's not the lower end S13. No, no, no. You have HVAC things on pods. I pushed on every part of the dash, nothing moved. All the lines are perfect. And I dare say that a Z32, if an NSX first gen is 10, a Z32 is like 8.5 to 9. I was not expecting the interior of this car to be so intuitive and so comfortable. Yes, I wanted to touch everything. It fed into me. It was so fancy! I bought the 1994 Nissan 300ZX. It's what the children like. So fancy! Oh yes, the Corvette C4. It was fancy, but my tastes have matured. Oh, my nipple. The... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, record that. Keep that in. Keep that in. The interior, <laughs> the interior was too low rent and impoverished for the likes of me. So I've gone for Japanese quality this time. Faster than its smelly American car, on principle. Corvette. Interesting. We all know the best things come in by boat, shoes, wine, art. Why would I buy my car at the same place a farmer buys his truck? Uh, uh, Frankly, I think the Corvette brand is a little bit old and tired. I mean, if you get a new wife, you don't get it from the same house her mother was raised in, do you? When I get a new wife, I'm not going to get one with the same last name as the one I found before. Oh, so fancy. I like my cars like I like my women young. And I dare say it is the toast of the town. It's so fancy that I think my Porsche parts might fit. Oh, I have a paper towel roll filled with micro machines. It goes inside the buttocks. Oh, oh. Oh, heavens, it's stuck. I feel like driving the Z is my way of bringing Japan to America because I've shipped so many things from America to Japan. Like jobs. <laughs> Here's the 90s, the time of the haves and the have-nots, and I am a have, as you know. Oh, and speaking of haves, I've recently procured a nice sun tea jar. I put it over my janitors and remove the air. Oh, my ball sack becomes the size and texture of a delectable and decorative cantaloupe. Uh. <laughs> this is not a Corvette C4. This doesn't cost fifty six thousand bucks like ugly dudes. It's nicer inside, so fancy and ninety. Let's drive. When you give an engine the beans, it shouldn't shout and protest I'm so brutish with the V8s. I like it when it gives a long murmur, almost determined to take the punishment, like a cabin boy. Have you grown tired of this voice? Too bad. <laughs> when I was circumcised, the doctor was drunk, and my foreskin looks like a 7-Eleven syrupy straw spoon. Oy vey, that's not how you do a circumcision. <laughs> and can you hand me the moil? What? What? Are we not doing the different voice now? <laughs> my name is Rabbi Mushugana. Uh, I can get away with that because I'm Jewish.